You read the note. Vandergeest's not going to wait around. Vandergeest? You mean like Eric Vandergeest, the serial killer? Lawrence seemed ready to pee his pants. Mark nodded. Anyway, I'm talking to him. I'm not in danger and you'll be a witness. Maybe you can, I don't know, write down what we talk about? He seemed to consider it for a second. Nods and reaches for a yellow notepad and a half-gone pencil. My objection to this is on the record, Mark. Dooley noted. Mark turned the walkie-talkie on and, taking a guess, pushed the plus button until the display showed 18. Unhappily holding his pencil, Lawrence saw his friend's eyes close in something like a prayer or concentration. When they opened up again, Mark's expression changed to gravely serious. Hello, Mark said, pressing the speaker button at the side. For several seconds, the walkie-talkie remained silent. Lawrence heard Mark's phone buzz with an incoming message, but he couldn't take his eyes off the walkie-talkie in Mark's hand. Finally, a reply. Hello, Marky. About time we talked. The voice sounded like a computer. He's using a voice changer, Lawrence whispered, although there was little need to do so. I use one when gaming online. It's a thing. Mark did not acknowledge Lawrence's voice, as if the walkie-talkie was the only thing in the world. What do you want? I mean, who is this? He sounded panicked. Don't worry yourself, Mark. If I wanted you dead, you'd have died already. I want to get to know you, my friend. I've spent a lot of time trying to figure you out. Years, Marky. Years. We have a connection. I can sense you, and I think you can sense me as well. Do you know when I've killed someone, Marky? No. Years ago, I knew you were looking for me. Those times when you're transported away from this world, I could feel your mind's eye searching. When I killed that beautiful girl in the little slum town and buried her next to a silo, you saw me. Mark's face had grown white. I drew you. I can touch things and I can draw memories. I drew you killing her, strangling her. So I did. Vandergeest's artificially high voice exhaled through the walkie-talkie. I can feel her clawing at my arms as I strangled her, even now. So can I. Lawrence stood without moving, his mouth partway open. This is unreal, he murmured. Not that Mark would have heard. Lawrence took his phone from his pocket and began to record the scene. You haven't tried looking for me this time around. Vandergeese sounded puzzled. No, I haven't. Why not? You're the reason they found me before. It hurts. To be inside their heads. In yours. I see. That explains things, to be honest. I've been wondering why you weren't in the game. This was such a good idea to finally talk to you. Is your friend there? That scared little Asian fellow? Is he listening to us have a chat? Is he calling the police right now? Because these walkie-talkies have a maximum range in the city of about one mile. I'm ripe for the plucking, aren't I? Damn, Lawrence said and began tapping at the phone screen. It doesn't matter. He can call all he wants. The police won't come close to catching me. Of course, I might just have a chat with him. Lawrence Chang, 2926 South 114th, Little Cream-Colored Ranch. Nice house with a nice pine tree in the backyard. Maybe one evening I'll find a spot on top of that office building across the street and wait for him to come home.